Hello and welcome to Simon Miller's Pro Wrestling Show. Uh, originally, we were trying an experiment, as you know, if you're a long-time watcher. And then probably what is going to be considered the biggest news of the year happened from nowhere. It blew my mind, as I'm sure it did yours as... I mean, it really just did come out of nowhere. Let's just face it. Here we were, sitting around, kind of wondering what was going to happen for WWE. I mean, it's been a pretty newsworthy week, right? It's been a pretty newsworthy week in the sense of the XFL and Florida deciding that wrestling was essential business because people wrestling around in their pants is essential during a global pandemic. And then, of course, late last night, uh, just a bunch of people got released. Uh, I should have got the, 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 the total list up, but I haven't. But, of course, you can find that on the internet quite easily. But, I mean, uh, who the hell was it? You had, well, Rusev, Kurt Angle, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, Drake Maverick, uh, Sarah Logan, uh, just a bunch of people. Mike Kyoda. Mike Kyoda got released. Mike Kyoda has been with the WWE for 31 years. And Lance Storm and Shane Helms. And it's important to state that, yes, a lot of these people have been furloughed, which is just a fancy word to say that maybe they'll be brought back on in the future. But... It's not really about that. It's not really about what's going to happen tomorrow or in a week or down the line. It's about what's happening right now. And it just sucks. There's no two ways about it, right? It absolutely sucks. And I hate saying things like this because it's bad when anybody lost their job. But I certainly know that when I saw names such as Rusev and Kurt Angle, I audibly said out loud, what the flip? <laughs> you know, what's going on? And there are some rumors that have surfaced ever since that potentially some people were happy to take their release. I mean, someone like EC3, you could probably make that argument for. They wanted out the company. Rumoredly, again, I want to say that word allegedly because we just don't know, uh, got a big payoff from it as well. And look, if there is a silver lining and there's some positivity to be taken away from this, great. If EC3 or anybody else is happy to be out the company, that rocks. But for every person you can say that for, on the other end is somebody like Drake Maverick, Rockstar Spud. And if you haven't seen his video he put up on Twitter, and no way, Jose's, I would implore you to go and watch both. I really, really would. And if it doesn't affect you even a little bit or make your heart go sad... Well, you 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 got no feelings. <laughs> You've got no emotions. It's it, it's heartbreaking. And I will address this because I know when we go through the comments, which we will do in a second. And again, if you want to get involved, please do. And if you do a super chat, I'll definitely make sure I get to you today, of course. But I understand that some people's feelings, and I already saw one comment earlier, actually, uh, was, well, it's business and this is what happens. And look, if you want to take that tack, you're absolutely allowed to. It is business. And if Vince McMahon wants to fire 100% of the people that work for him, he's allowed to do that. But I don't see it that way to me when we all have our backs against the wall as we do at the moment. I just think it's nice when you see companies trying to protect their employees or being like, oh, we're all in this together. And given the, I mean, we don't know the financial situation, we don't, but given what is out there, if you do dig into it, it certainly does seem like there was enough cash for this not to happen. It's just an awful situation, though. I don't want to get too much into that because I feel like that takes away from the individuals. And they're the people we should be focusing on. Because if this was any other time, there'd be a, a sense of excitement in the air. Like, are the OC going to go to AEW with the Revival? What? Maybe Rusev will finally get his due. Uh, maybe Kurt Angle will go somewhere as a manager like Jake Roberts has. Or I, mean, I want him to see him, to see him have one last match. But we could have that speculation. But there is no indie scene. And there is no AEW. And there is no New Japan. And there is no Ring of Honor. There's nobody. Because there's nothing. There's not restaurants. There's not cinemas. There's not bars. Everything has closed down. Uh, now, it does sound like they got big payoffs, which is good. Hopefully that, you know, casts them through a few weeks. But I know as a wrestling fan, and the only way I can judge it as a wrestling fan, I was just watching it thinking, this must be so hard to take. Because it's bad enough if you lose. It's, it's bad regardless. I don't want to say that. There's no good or there's no better version of bad. But I can imagine, like, when I watched No Way Jose's Twitter video, the only thing I could think of was this guy seemed so devastated to be released from wwe and i don't mean this disrespectful to him but he didn't even get treated right right he wasn't like a big dude he had a good run in nxt he came up he was a comedy character for a while and then he was just getting destroyed by by people like bobby lashley right which is what happened uh you know but a few days ago so to you know have this sorry just check my audio was working i was like oh no god it's not working i'm just talking to have you know to, to have your dream taken away from you i guess it must sting. Well, it stings regardless. Even if you lose your job at a coffee shop, who cares? You're going to be worried about finances. But that's all I could keep thinking about. It must be a very strange feeling to achieve this 
goal that seems so out of touch in many ways. I mean, we all want to, we all dream big and we all go after them, but to actually get there is something else entirely. And like someone like Kurt Angle too. Mike, Mike Kyoto and Kurt Angle are two that I was absolutely shocked by. Like Rusev's clearly been in some kind of contract negotiations with them and they came to an impasse. But Kurt Angle surely has years of worth to add to the company. And I get it. You know, the other thing is apparently a lot of the producers will be brought back when we're doing house shows again because you don't need them when you're just doing one show a week. But does Kurt Angle want to do that? I don't, I don't know. I don't know how Kurt Angle feels. I'm not going to speak on his behalf. But it seems... You know, I don't know how this is going to affect things going forward, but loyalty is a big thing, especially in professional wrestling. And you may not want to go back. You may be like, no, I can't believe you just threw me out of my ass. Mike Kyoto, man. <laughs> 31 years. Uh, again, so yes, if you do want to get involved in the chat, please do use a super chat and I'll, I'll make sure I read it every one. We're going to do them all now. Uh, we will talk about AEW Dynamite later too. A uh, quick shout out to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv for us at Simon316 because we are going to start building up the streaming there. But how could I not talk about this on YouTube, right? The biggest story in ages. And shout out to all my patrons as well. Patreon.com forward slash Simon Miller 316. The only reason I'm able to do this, and again, given everything that's going on in the global landscape right now, anyone that has supported me, both ever and recently, uh, your heroes. And even if you throw $1 into the mix, it does help me no end. There is a link in the description below. And subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Please do. And the like button as well. Uh, YouTube loves engagement. The better engagement we do, the better we do all around. And my man Tom Talks Rubbish in the Super Chat says, I feel bad for those released as an optimist. Hopefully they'll come back when all this is over and have a bright future if that's not in WWE. Hopefully it will rejuvenate the indies or other major companies. I mean, yeah. If we... If they were open, it would. It would because like WWE's had, you know, too many talents on their books for ages anyway. We know this. And they know this. Hence why they were able to release it. It was a business decision to keep them away from their competitors. Something they are allowed to do. They were still paying people. People had signed contracts. Just notice I'm invisible for some reason. Oh well. But these are you know, but that's the thing that really gets me is that they can't go anywhere right now. They literally can't go anywhere because wrestling is operating in AEW, sure, but they've taken weeks of shows. And I don't think you would bring anybody else to turn up at uh, Double or Nothing, for example. That seems like a, a, a bad idea. Uh, Super Sign Blast in the Super Chat says, Vince failed with the XFL WWE workers pay for it. Well, that's that's one way to look at it. I don't know whether the two tie in. I'm not going to sit here and speculate because, you know, I haven't gone through the books. But that just ties into this week as well. Like, just a nuts week. A nuts week all around where, yeah, the XFL died for, for, for the second time and then it was bankrupt and then it seemed like WWE had stocks in it even though Vince McMahon said they hadn't. It's just a really crazy situation. A really crazy situation. Non WWE guy in Super Chat says, unpopular opinion. I, for one, will never lose, will never celebrate or wish for anyone to lose their job, whether it's someone like Daniel Bryan or despise that Lars Sullivan, especially during a time like this. That's not an unpopular opinion. If anybody actually has enjoyed anyone losing their job, you know what? You can just stop watching the stream, to be honest. It's never cool if someone loses a job. Just because you don't like somebody's wrestling character, that doesn't pertain to them as a human being. Like, you see it all the time. Boris Johnson, for example, who is somewhat of a controversial prime minister right here in England, he was struck down with a coronavirus and it got really bad. And you would see these tweets of people going, well, I'm not a Tory and I don't like Boris Johnson. It's like, who cares about your political leanings or whether you think he's a good human being or not? Um, I didn't vote for him and I wouldn't have voted for him. Just, but I don't want to get into that debate. I'm just letting you know I would not. But... You know, as soon as a human being gets ill, I worry about their health. I don't worry about any other allegiances because that's not how it works. Uh, non WWE guy in the super chat always also says, hand on the heart for you. Get hand on the heart for you, super chat. On a non WWE note, shame on Chris Jericho for not using his influence as Le Champion to get Proud and Powerful an AEW tag team title match this far. Justice for Proud and Powerful. Well, that's very out of nowhere, non WWE guy. Uh, we will talk about AEW Dynamite in a, in, in a little bit, but. Uh, I can't remember I mean, the tag team. Well, the tag team, they may have, they probably would have done by now. But again, everything ties in the global situation, as I'll call it. My man, Robert Jackson, Super Chat says, the most shocking of the firings was Mike Kyoda. I totally agree. I, I, I totally agree. I, 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 still, I still can't believe it now. It's like when it happened, I, I doubled. I thought it was a mistake because Mike Kyoda has been there since I was a kid. He's been there 31 years. Like I was only just born when Mike Kyoda started working for wwe 
and I find, and all and I've only some podcasts and things like that. It just sounds like he was a super good dude. Still helped out with the ring, kind of acted as a runner of sorts for the company, doing all of this stuff. So I don't know. Maybe he's come to some kind of agreement where he is going to be brought back, and he understands. Maybe it's a company guy move. I don't know. But those are the kinds of names that absolutely they're they're, they're all shocking because it sucks. But someone that's been there that long to sort of find out they've lost their job in the space of a few hours. I mean, we didn't even know this was a thing until like 12 p.m. Eastern yesterday. It was just like a freight train. BA4, the Super Chat says, apparently Daniel Bryan and Adam Cole's contracts end by the summer. Do you think they can release Bryan because no SmackDown stars were released? Uh, I'd love to know where you got that information from, BA4. Please let me know. Um, look, anything is possible. But again, I'm not going to sit here and wish that anybody gets released. I would imagine that Daniel Bryan is too big a star, as awful as that sounds, but that's how the world works. And I think it would be the same with Adam Cole. There are some people who are always going to be protected from that because of their status with the company. Yeah, Roman Reigns, uh, uh, Daniel Bryan, uh, Seth Rollins, uh, Drew McIntyre. You know, all these guys will be fine. But I don't think we should start taking... I'm not saying you're doing this, but in general, I've seen this a lot. We shouldn't start taking shots. Or, oh, WWE should get rid of this guy so these people can stay. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. That's not... You know, there's two wrongs don't make a right. You know, that classic thing your mum used to tell you. Let's focus on the sadness here, which is that a bunch of people lost their jobs. Imagine, like, like I say, I'm a freelancer by trade, and I'm very lucky to have a lot of... Uh, feathers in my cap, whatever the hell the saying is, eggs in my basket. So when all this stuff did start off, I was okay. But I still lost a lot. And when you've budgeted for a certain amount and then you lose opportunities, you do get a little bit scared, even though you're like, well, I'm going to be, I'm sure I'll be okay. So when you lose your major source of income and revenue and you don't know where you're going to make it up, it doesn't matter if you're a celebrity, not a celebrity, a wrestler, a famous person, that's a horrible thing to go to. And there is something else doubly kicking the balls when you've made it to the top and then you've kind of been dropped off like Heath Slater I know everyone's got this joke now that Jinder Mahal got fired and Drew McIntyre got fired so now Heath Slater can come back and win the title and maybe he does and maybe in two years time we can we can celebrate but I'm not going to start celebrating now because it's really disrespectful Dan Lemley Super Chat says this is BS expect for the people who wanted it this uh the WWE could have afforded to keep them I mean that does seem to be true uh that does seem to be true it's uh <clears throat> excuse me if you if you dive into the financials and again i'm gonna use the words allegedly because i don't know and i don't want to be that person that, that makes sweeping statements but if you do look at it it seems like this was avoidable and that's when you can choose which side of the fence you sit on because i can see people right now say well, it was a business they can do what they want yes they can but you can also try and take care of people and that's the side of the fence i sit on no judging that's just my personal opinion. I just felt super sorry for all of these guys. And shout out to Dan as well for coming on the Patreon, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Lee Cleesby in the Super Chat says, None of the talent released so far as SmackDown. Pretty more, pretty, pretty more to come, surely. I mean, maybe. <clears throat> maybe it just turns out there's more on the Raw side. I don't think they would have done it like that. Although saying that, they did then move on to NXT. Maybe. Maybe. I'll, I'll make sure I keep an eye on the news as we're talking here. Maybe they will release some SmackDown people. Um... It just sucks. <laughs> that's the that's the thing. No matter who else goes, it, it it's not going to be it's not going to be any fun. Shout out to Sean as well, who just threw some money in the super chat. I appreciate that, Sean. Thank you so much. Uh, Robert Jackson, the super chat also says, "I'm worried for Xavier Woods. Sure, the New Day makes WWE money, but he's also on the shelf for a while." Well, I think guys like the New Day would be fine. They are a major act, and again, this sounds awful, but unfortunately, it's the way of the world. If WWE also fired somebody who was injured, that would be awful PR. And it's not great PR anyway, but that does tie into it. I mean, I'm hoping there are no more releases. But we don't know is the honest answer. We, we, we don't know. And it, it, it all depends on how much money they're trying to save and what the actual goal is here. Because what a lot of people bring up is the Saudi Arabia situation. Uh, we're not going to get a Saudi Arabia show in September, November, whenever the hell they, that they, they usually run them. I don't think and the world may have changed by then. But if not, that's a loss of revenue. So this could potentially be WWE's way of trying and balancing that out, even though they don't need to. And that's the thing I want to make clear. I'm not saying there's not a logical way to look at it. Of course there is. They're not doing it for fun. But it doesn't make it palatable. 
if we use that word, it doesn't make it palatable. Uh, my man Hans Jocha Meyer in the super chat says, "How are you in these dire times?" That's very nice, Hans. I'm doing all right. I'm doing fine. Like I say, I have this and lovely people like yourself. I have my Patreon and I have my what culture work. You know, I did lose a lot. There was I was doing very many projects. My wrestling being one of them. Uh, but there are people that are far worse off, and I at the moment are going to be okay. So there's no, I, I'm not going to throw myself into the fire pit. Uh, when when there's no need a lot of people here as well saying you know what about AEW what about AEW well they can't hire everyone and I don't think that we would want them to hire anyone I mean of course I would from a humanistic point of view but from a creative point of view I think like 30 odd people got released yesterday you can't put them all in there I mean guy if someone said you know guys I would love to see an AEW that got released all of them but in terms of again just purely from a fandom point of view Rusev of course everyone knows I'm a fanboy for Rusev I'd make him champion tomorrow I think Gallows and Anderson and the uh, Revival going to AEW. I know the Revival released a couple of days ago, but still, I think that makes their tag team division even better than it already is. Uh, I think a guy like Zack Ryder would be so incredibly over with that AEW crowd, he'd make them a fortune, which is what it's all about, really. You want to be a... <laughs> Excuse me, you want to be a draw. He's only 34 years old as well. And he's got a tremendous amount of experience and passion. And in fact, the way that Zack Ryder, is, Zack Ryder has handled this, just go on his Instagram and Twitter. The man is, uh, he's inspirational with this kind of stuff. He doesn't let it get him down. So shout out to him massively. And I need the list in front of me, but I think Kurt Angle could do a job for anybody. Who's got more experience than Kurt Angle? So could Mike Kyoda. So could Lance Storm. Lance Storm got let go. That very much sounds like a first in, uh, last out, first in, no, last in, first out situation. But I've, I've watched Lance Storm, not only in the ring, but talking about wrestling on YouTube. Few people know more about wrestling than him. Uh, BA4 also says about this in the Super Chat. He says, if Angle was to become a manager, he would be great for Jeff Cobb if the world goes back to normal. I know what you mean. There's kind of a, a wrestling connection there. The thing is, if you put Kurt Angle with anyone, you do have a Jake Roberts situation. He will, you know, he, he, he will bring legitimacy to somebody that, that needs it. I don't necessarily think that Jeff Cobb needs legitimacy because he's he, he Jeff Cobb, right? He gets in the ring, he kicks people's ass. Uh, but maybe like a Sean Spears, uh, Tully Blanchard situation, paired with the right person, people are going to take note. And much like when he jumped to TNA, it's a huge name. He's an Attitude Era name. And there's always going to be worth in that because, again, wrestling fans, including lap ones, know it. They hear it. They go, oh, Kurt Angle. Uh, Football Extremist in the Super Chat says, Simon, hope you're doing well. And to you, my friend, I feel bad for these WW workers, but I feel Vince's bank account was in crisis due to the XFL. And it very well may be. Uh, we don't know. I don't know. I can't talk to anybody else, but I don't know. So it's all well and good for us to sit here and say, oh, they could have done this and they could have done that. And I still believe that. Maybe they couldn't have done Maybe they couldn't have done. So you're right. Maybe WWE is in a really bad position. I think the reason it becomes more controversial is because there's these reports out there that WWE has 500 million in debt management or something like that. I, I, you'd have to go look at it. I don't want to, I don't want to get it wrong. Um, but that's why I think it's really important that when we are talking about it to, to walk on eggshells a little bit because we do not know about finances and business. And if you've gone on Seth Rollins' Instagram, for example, uh, I thought he got a bit of a... I, I think he, people were a bit harsh on him. Clearly very upset and very taken aback by what has happened to his friends, essentially, to his friends. But he also tried to defend WWE, which of course he's going to do. He works for them. I just don't, I think right now in situations like this, let's stay away from the negativity. If he wants to defend WWE, it's not the worst thing in the world. Instead of getting mad at him, again, go tweet Rusev, go tweet Kurt Angle, the OC, Mike Kyoda, uh, Sarah Logan, uh, Drake Maverick. Go tweet them with something nice. That's the more important thing. Daz4785 in the Super Chat says, Indie scene will be good when we get back to normal. I mean, right? If, if That's the only, well, there's more than one shame. But the uh, the super, super duper shame is that if all these guys could just like wreck the indie scene and some of them may even come over here to England, I could have had a match with one of them. And that's a very selfish thing to say. And it doesn't matter. It's completely irrelevant. But how cool would that be? Imagine I was in the ring with Rusev because some English company hired him and I managed to squeak that match out. It wouldn't be me. Somebody else would be more appropriate. But that'd be the time of my life. So, you know, uh, CJ Hicks in the Super Chat says, Hey, Simon, I'm sure this whole situation is also affecting you as a pro wrestler. So I hope you're doing all right for yourself. Thanks for the great content. That's very kind, CJ. Thanks. I mean, it has. Uh, my last booking was in February, something like that. Maybe early March. I squeezed one in. And then I had bookings for the rest of the year and they all got wiped out like many wrestlers. But again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm very lucky in the sense that I have other things that I've always done. And I'm relying on those right now. There are other wrestlers in far worse positions. 
Um, but that's very kind of you, CJ. I appreciate that. Uh, my man, Sid Ibn Lay in the Super Chat says, It's a real shame that all of this is happening, especially in times like these. Hopefully everything turns out well. Lots of love for everyone from me. That's the kind of thing I like. Good work, Sid. I'm with you on that. It sucks. It's awful. But let's just try and throw some cheer and goodwill back into the universe and hope that when we do all get through this, we somehow find a way to make it back to normality. Because there's reports going on now that maybe we can't have fan-attended events till 2021. 2021 we're in april 2020 in case you uh, in case you didn't realize uh, it's kind of mad to me march 11th is the day that we sat down here and we did a podcast about my little clip that got on AEW dynamite right the sean spears search for tag team partner thing which was awesome and we're only a month past that really and now we're all trapped in our houses and wwe just released 30 odd people if that's not the 180 of all 180s i don't even know what is uh, Austin Sherlin in the Super Chat says, how do you feel about Vince being added as an economic advisor? I don't want to get into it. I don't even know what to say about it. Uh, I think it's kind of crazy. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, the, I don't know. The, the situation in America feels preemptive to me with this idea that businesses can reopen in a couple of weeks, but maybe I'm being a worry wart. Um... There's obviously a relationship between Vince McMahon and Donald Trump, the same as there is between Dana White and Donald Trump too. And realistically, that's how the world works. You scratch my back, I will scratch yours. It was a surprise. <laughs> I would just say that. It was uh, it, it was a surprise. James A25 in the Super Chat says, Hey, Simon, hope you're keeping well with your content. Keeps us positive. Thank you. Glad to support you on Patreon. Well, that's very nice, James. Thank you very much. And you did. Thank you very much for coming aboard, my Patreon. Salute to James. One day I'll remember to... Maybe at the end of this, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to find as many new people as I can and thank them for joining and shun the ones that left. That's a joke. I won't, I won't do that. Uh, James, you also asked me a question about how you can ask a question in the Q&A. Uh, Q&A thread goes up live every week and yeah if you're a five dollar plus patron uh you can just join my weekly q and a's you can ask me whatever the hell you want literally anything religion drugs booze muscle wrestling televisions whatever you want to ask you can ask and i will uh, i will definitely answer them my man moda in the super chat good to see you my friend hey simon hope you're well uh, you're going with my motto sometimes of life just sucks this sucks for everyone who lost their jobs i'm praying for them their families and their situation and i encourage others to do the same that's the kind of attitude I think is awesome right now. Because that's all we can do. Um, and look, you are allowed to go out there and slam WWE and say it's atrocious and the business practice sucks. And a lot of people are. Uh, I'm not going to, absolutely, I'm not going to hold you back from doing that. I'm just not going to do that here because that's never been my MO. My MO has always been to try and focus on the, well, the things that I want to focus on. Let me get the list up. It's only fair. We should, we should go through the list. Otherwise, I don't necessarily think it's disrespectful. But I think it's... I don't know, that's just how my weird brain works. I think there's something nice in giving them all a shout out, given that they've managed to entertain us for so many years. So, Drake Maverick, Kurt Hawkins, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, EC3, Leo Rush, Eric Young, Heath Slater, Aiden English, Kurt Angle, Sarah Logan, Mike Kyoda, Eric Rowan. <sighs> Crazy. Primo Epico, Mike Kanellis, Maria Kanellis, Zack Ryder, No Way Jose, Rusev, Billy Kidman, Mike Rotunda, Dave Finley, Pat Buck, Sean Davari, Scott Armstrong, Sarah Stock, Shane Helms, Lance Storm, and I haven't even mentioned the NXT guys. One of the NXT guys was Dan Mather, who everyone used to tweet me going, Miller, you're in NXT. So, hey, look, if Dan Mather is out there right now, if there's any way we can ever team together, I will do it. I will do it tomorrow, and we'll try and get some, uh, we'll stock out these things that people have been saying. Uh, Sean in Super Chat says, throwing money at you is easy when you produce such great content and look as fantastic as you do. I'm going to read this bit as you are my king. I'm not going to read what you wrote, but it's very kind. In Miller, I trust, hashtag beefcave, hashtag stud. Oh, that's very, very nice of you, Sean. I appreciate that. I'm invisible right now. I don't know what the hell's happened to my camera. I'm just wearing a white top in front of a green screen. But it's kind of cool. I'm a ghost today. That's a nice thing. I've never been a ghost. See, there's always a positive. That's very kind of you, Sean. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Aaron in the super chat says, Braun Strowman will be eating his own words right now. To be fair to Braun Strowman, the statement he made, and if you didn't see it, it was about independent wrestlers struggling during this crisis because they didn't have a backup. All the rumors do state that he regrets saying it. People sat him down and talked to him, and he realized he was wrong. We all make mistakes. We all say stupid things. And if Braun has understood that, then I don't think we need to give him a kicking. You only have to give somebody a kicking if it's not getting through. But everybody said it got through. And he was like, okay, I shouldn't have said that. So you're right. He would be. 
but it seems like he has uh he's owned it it sounds like he's owned it so yeah it's uh it you just have to move on my man mark w in the super chat says i hope you're keeping well and here's something to help the content coming simon that's very kind mark thank you have you watched oscar's youtube channel she's a goofball love her i have and she's awesome and we said that on ups and downs this week and cheap plug in 30 minutes 2 p.m over on what culture wrestling make sure you subscribe to them and as we're talking about subscriptions please hit the subscribe button right now on mine and hit the like button the more likes this does the more youtube likes me um but yeah the best thing about oscar as she has proven and there is a rumor going around that vince man has w- realized this and sees that maybe he's she's worth more than he realized if she can be a goofball she can be a moron she can be a fool but she's so good in the ring and she's so good at what she does you always i always call it a kurt angle situation right because kurt angle was an idiot as a character but he was so good in the ring he was able to get away with all this comedy stuff and i remember other people would try and do comedy stuff but because they didn't have the intensity haha and the legitimacy of of a kurt angle it didn't work. And that's what Oscar, Oscar can dance, and Oscar can go nuts on the mic, and Oscar can do her crazy commentary stuff. But she gets away with it because she's so good in the ring, and she already has this legacy of the people that she's beaten and the titles that she's won. Plus, she was a Royal Rumble winner. So, yeah, I completely agree with you, Mark. I think in terms of... I mean, they've all been MVPs. But if you had to choose someone that I think really has stood out amongst the pack ever since all this madness started in WWE, I give it to Oscar. I would give it to Oscar. I really, really would. Uh, John Marlin, the Super Chat says, uh, as the thing, I'm not going to say the word, YouTube doesn't like it started, I saw a quote. Keep an eye on how companies treat their employees during a crisis. It shows their true selves. Says a lot about WWE. I get it, man. I understand. Like, I, I, we did a video over on What Culture last night. You can check it out called Why WWE Has Changed Forever. will never be the same again, which I truly do believe. Um, it, I, I compared it to Tottenham Football Club over here in, in England. America in England they put a load of their non-playing staff on furlough right they furloughed them and the fans turned around and said well we don't think you should be doing that and it took them a couple of weeks but they changed their minds and there is still going to be this bedding in period when now they need to mend that relationship but they still did it it's like the Braun Strowman thing they still did it with WWE I think a lot of fans will remember this and it may leave a little bit of a sky maybe you do cancel the network maybe you don't want to watch Raw as much I don't think people should be destroyed if they do still want to watch raw of course you're allowed to watch raw it's your entertainment and right now for goodness sake we need that more than ever but it could do and i think it's going to be very interesting when we get out the other side what side of the fence people fall on and a man sean gear super chat says hey simon hope you're well did you see drake maverick's video it was heartbreaking such a sad day for wwe and wrestling as a whole hand on the heart to everyone yeah i did we talked about it earlier it was um you know <laughs> That's the kind of thing that I would always... As I said, I don't want to go over it again too much, but that's the kind of thing I always implore people to go and watch, uh, especially when you're saying stupid things about people being fired. That guy is crushed, and that guy is really, really good at what he does, and now he probably doesn't even know what is tomorrow. Or Because, like, you know, it, even if you're super entrepreneurial, who's he going to reach out to? I'm going to come back to England for a run. You can't. Everything's closed, and that's what makes it uh, all the worst. <laughs> shout out to my man robert alomar in the super chat the one and only adam mayhem we're breaking the fourth wall here hey brother great to see that you're doing well thank you man and to you where's my belt <laughs> it's over there dude i've got a shelf over there and it's up i i have it up dude that's the best pride in place i need to start defending it as you do know when this wrestling stuff starts going again love you man love you too robert robert is a really really good dude i learned a lot to robert when it comes to my wrestling stuff so yeah, everyone say nice things to Rob. He's a good, <laughs> he's a good dude. He, he did a solid for me. Uh, my man Moda in the super chat that has just vanished for some reason. Let's get that back. Apologies. There we go. Simon, I love your content. And so I choose to support you with my dollars. That's very nice. I would implore fans, if you like a certain wrestler, go support them by buying their merch, etc. Or if you can't, just hold a good thought for them. I like that. Uh, that's very kind of you, Moda. And uh, honestly, all the, it, this all helps me massively. So, you know, I put my hands together for you. But of course, there may be other people in financial straits as well. Of course, yeah, just send out some love. Send out some good thoughts. Um, you don't need to bankrupt yourself to try and stop somebody else from being bankrupt. You do have to put yourself first sometimes. But Moda, you're a good guy. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. And I hope you're doing well. Uh, BA4 in the Super Chat says... I uh, hope it goes back to normal by the G1 Climax. When's the G1? Summer? Late summer? September? No, that's too late. 
I mean, maybe. I mean, New Japan would love that. You know, New Japan would absolutely love nothing more if they could come back with the G1, you know, one of their biggest tournaments. I think the problem... Not the problem, so let me rephrase that. I think the issue is uh, that New Japan needs to do that because they're in dire straits as well. But all the Japanese wrestling companies came together, according to Dave Meltzer, over the last few days. And they're standing tall to protect their employees, which is <laughs> it's a, a very different stance. Let's just say that. It's a very, it's a very different stance. <laughs> Luke in a super chat. That's my man, Luke. Friend of mine for over 30 years. Thanks very much, man. You didn't need to do that. Well, that's very kind. He's a good guy. Everyone say hello to Luke as well. Who hey, must be watching as well. So I appreciate that. Um, I didn't mean to spend this luck on super chats, but man, there's a lot of questions. So we'll just keep going. Nothing worse than dry chicken in a super chat, which is an amazing name. Uh, sorry, my patron. Uh, I, I stopped my patron for you last September. It's all right. I had to budget as and when. It's a shame I never did the podcast, but I don't think I would entertain anyway. My boys and I implore you, stay well, stay well, stay safe, V. Don't be silly. Look, again, you've got to put yourself first. You have to budget. And I completely understand that food, clothes, fuel for your car, your children come before supporting me. But I just massively appreciate you being there for a while uh, in the first place. And if you didn't come on the podcast, you can still come on. That offer is open. Again, one of the tiers is you can come on the podcast. Again, make sure you check, uh, search for Simon's Pro Wrestling Show right now in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, whatever your podcast app of choice is, we put up exclusive episodes and you can catch all of this audio should you so wish. So if you do want to stick it on, drop me a line on Patreon. You can still do that. Um, and I'm sure you would be very entertaining. But hello to you. Hello to your boys. And if I'm entertaining you at all, then I'm privileged and I'm honored. Uh, it, it, it really is my pleasure. Uh, Rag Haven N in the super chat says, this is the worst time to lose a job. I hope things get back to normal. Absolutely. It is the worst time to lose a job because you don't, like, it sucks to lose a job regardless. Like, of course it does because all, it's like when you break up with someone, all of a sudden you're like, what do I do now? I've been doing that every day. But when you can't even start applying for other stuff because millions of other people are too, it's difficult. It, it's really, really difficult. Ashley Reynolds in the Super Chat says, just sending some love to the bored asshole. Hope you have a great day, Simon. Thank you, Ashley. I'm not going to lie. I love the fact I got bored asshole over as some kind of a compliment. I really do. Especially because it came from people who constantly called me bored asshole. That, to me, that's better than why. That's better than the ups and downs catchphrases that we do. Bored asshole is the best. I got to put it on a t-shirt, but I don't want it to be offensive. Maybe I'll do it like you did it, the at sign and the dollar dollar. And it can just say bored ass. I need, I need like an Austin one. So Austin 316, but it can say like bored asshole something. I'll come up with some numbers. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I think of something. Maybe I just do 316 anyway. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and Ashley also says just apologizing for the typos. You don't have to apologize for the typos, Ashley. It's the internet. Grammar doesn't exist anymore. We can do whatever the hell we want. Uh, my man Baz Hoban in the super chat says, uh, "Don't eat, uh, donating what I can as usual. That's very kind, Baz. Just got here. Sorry, pal. Loved Hager Moxley for its simplicity. I feel I'm in the minority. Bad news today. Love to Rusev. Yeah, Rusev, again, there's, they're all bad, but Rusev really got me. I'm such a fan of Rusev. I never think he got his due in WWE once his push just seemed to stop for, uh, uh, for no reason whatsoever. But maybe... He's one of the guys that comes out of this smelling of roses. I really, really hope that he does. He's got so he's so much potential. So much potential. And we will talk about AEW Dynamite. Yes, yeah, so I want to get through. Uh, again, when do you ever get a new story this big? And I know it's big because more people are watching the stream than ever. So I want to focus on that for now and get all your comments in so that we can share this as a community. Because that's the cool thing about professional wrestling is that when these stories do break, both good and bad, we can share our thoughts with each other and it just makes it more interesting. Daz4785 in the Super Chat says... Roman Reigns' wife is pregnant. Interesting. I miss Roman already. I don't think you're going to see Roman for the rest of 2020. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Got to put himself first. Got to put his health first. Got to put his family first. And if his wife is pregnant, that is all the more reason to try and protect your family. So, yeah. Uh, QPR Forever says, shout out to Captain Tom Moore. Absolutely. If you haven't seen what Tom Moore is doing over here in the UK, just Google him. I mean, Unbelievable unbelievable if you can donate some money as well you should um yeah i i don't like again people started to ne equate it with negativity saying well this person did this. let's just focus on the good stuff again go google tom moore qpr forever is is 100 percent right and dan lemley i think i've got to all of them let me just click these ones to make sure yes i have thank goodness for that 
Uh, Dan Lemley in Super Chat says, we need to start the bald asshole movement. Maybe it could be that. Bald asshole movement. Any ideas? So the t-shirt's black, right? It's Austin 316. It says bald asshole, but it needs something else. Otherwise, people are like, why is that guy wearing a bald asshole t-shirt? Think about it. Let me know. Um, but we should start that movement. And Brad Hannon in the Super Chat says, hey, Simon, I tuned in late. I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize, dude. Come whenever you want. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm sorry if you're repeating yourself. I can repeat myself. Uh, do you think this will have a really bad effect on the rest of the WWE roster? As many have lost close friends and even partners like AJ Styles and Lana. Well, you know, that comes down to a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That's a personal thing, right? I did mention this in the What Culture video we did late last night. And again, thank you to everyone who watched that. That was really cool. We kind of had to scramble to get it up. I can't imagine AJ Styles is very happy right now. I'm sure he's really good friends with Gallows and Anderson. In kayfabe land, he's just lost his two henchmen. The OC is dead. You know, it just is at the moment. Hopefully they'll come back, but we just don't know. I'm sure that he understands, but it's not like this is something that will just right itself. And that's why everyone said, oh, Simon, what would you mention the Montreal Screwjob for in this other video? And the reason I mentioned the Montreal Screwjob was because that did have a, a negative effect on the locker room. And I'm not saying this is going to do the same, but it may do, and it may have a negative effect for fans. And I, I, we've got a tiny portion of them here, but a lot of people are saying the same thing. Um, it's, I mean, it could do. And like Lana, for example, I mean, it, it can work. You look at someone like John Moxley and Renee Young, they're doing fine, and I'm sure they won't be alone. I think once you understand the wrestling business, you understand the wrestling business, and that's really what matters. But yes, absolutely, it could it could have a knock-on effect. It's going to have a knock-on effect. Because even if all these people got brought back, we shall all remember the 15th of April. We just will, because it's a massive day. Hence why I was trying... It sums up to even little things like this. I'm trying to try a, a Twitch experiment at the moment to see if we can start live streaming on Twitch and do videos on demand on here, because I think that the live streaming is affecting my, my view count and my subscribers. But then this breaks, and you're like, well, we can't worry about that now. We just need to have the biggest conversation that we possibly can. And look, I don't make videos at 11 p.m. at night, which is what we did for What Culture last night, unless I'm like, man, we've got to make videos at 11 p.m. at night. It's a huge story, and there will be ramifications and knock-on effects. And it's an even bigger story, because in terms of the hierarchy, WWE is not even that high. You know, NFL would be higher. You know, everything would be higher. The government would be higher. And everyone's involved, which is why it's so nuts. Um, but hopefully it just writes itself uh, and sorts itself out. Um, ba, 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 where there is uh, Michael Gustin in the super chat says Ryder for TNT champion. Great shout. I honestly believe Zack Ryder in AEW would be a million bucks. I just think that crowd would love him. And now he's even more sympathetic than he already was. The guy that got himself over on YouTube but never got a push. Had that amazing thing at WrestleMania 32, I think it was, when he won the IC title and then he loses it 24 hours later. And then he gets to a company that's completely fan-driven. I think, it, I think it would be brilliant. Also, my word. Shout out to Chris Hobson, who has nailed it. Bald asshole 24-7. That's the t-shirt. Keep an eye out for that. I've got to wait for... I have shout Pins and Knuckles merch. Shout out to PinsandKnuckles.com, who support my, uh, my podcast and also help me make my merchandise. I have a massive order for them ready to go. Uh, it was my bad. I wasn't able to, to pay them at the time. And then they had to, unfortunately, shut down for the... Just for the you know short term, like lots of companies have. But when they're open again... I am going to make that bored asshole t-shirt. It will be up at simonmiller.bigcartel.com. Not a plug, just letting you know where it's going to be. It's going to be black, and it's going to say bald asshole 24-7, and there'll be something on the back of it. That is happening. Good shout, Chris Hobson. Every time I talk about it, Chris, I'm going to shout you out. Thank you so much. You've nailed it. Um, Daz4785, uh, he's got a good idea too. How about bald a-hole, no hair, no hair, don't care. <laughs> That's two t-shirts. Oh, who knew? I hated losing my hair. Now I've embraced it and I'm going to make t-shirts out of it. That's what wrestling is all about. Surely, surely. And my man Sean in Super Chat says, Simon Miller is my beautiful bald... Hang on, I'll start again. Simon Miller is my beautiful bald asshole of the donkey. As a broken Matt Hardy would say, lady, get in line. Hang on, I see what you're doing. So my beautiful bald hole of the donkey, of the ass. Oh, I've got it, I've got it. But I see what you're nice. I'm with you. It took me a while to get there, a bit like when Yoda talks, but we got there in the end. So well, that's very kind of you, man. I appreciate that. I genuinely do appreciate all the nice words. I don't want to get too hippy trippy, but... Uh, especially right now, again, when there's bad stuff in the world. When people send me messages, and sometimes people send me emails or Instagram messages, I can't get back to them all um, because it's just not realistic. But the fact that you're even thinking to send them to begin with, please do realize, in all the people in the chat as well, I, I see you all, it 
genuinely motivates me and inspires me. And sometimes I can't even believe it's happening to me. <laughs> genuinely, that means the word. A sentence to me is awesome. So yes, just, just thank you. Thank you so much. And my man Breakfast at Noon, who has been around for such a long time, has put some... <laughs> I've put some money in the super chat. I don't watch wrestling, but have some protein on me, mate. Breakfast at noon. You are, again, he has been around for a long ass time and he's always super nice to me. And he came back to the Patreon. He's too nice. So breakfast at noon. Go and check out his uh, his Twitch channel as well. I'm 99% sure it's, uh, it's breakfast at noon. Uh, go watch him on Twitch. He's very fun. He's very entertaining. And he plays horror games, which I used to do and refused to. So he'll be able to help you out. My man Jordan Travers is also in the, t -sh in the, uh, in the chat. Make a butterfly t-shirt. Jordan Travers and I used to work together when I used to make video game magazines. And I did screw him over one day by making him put butterflies on a t-shirt. That's a true story. <laughs> and clearly he's, uh, he's never forgiven me. Um, I am definitely, the, these t-shirt ideas are great. So is it bored a-hole, no hair, don't care. And I'm definitely prioritizing bored asshole 24-7. Uh, on the back, 365. <laughs> Oh man, these are fantastic. Why have I never why have I never canvassed for wrestling t-shirts before? I'm gonna write this down as soon as we're done because we will we will absolutely forget about it. Uh, but thank you very much. Uh, right, on that note, we've got uh, 14 minutes left. Uh, I'll use this little sort of impasse to say again, if you could hit the subscribe button, that would rock. If you could hit the like button, that would rock. If you do want to talk about any more of the releases, I mean, we've been talking about it now for 40 minutes, so I think we can talk about Dynamite. But I'm happy to talk about whatever. Just throw a comment or a super chat, and uh, and we shall and we shall do that. In terms of AEW Dynamite, let's focus on John Moxley versus uh, who the hell did he fight? Jake Hagar. I thought it was fine. I thought it was good to a certain extent. I saw a lot of hate, as somebody mentioned earlier. Which I do understand, but I don't think it was their fault. I think given how it was, they kind of suffered because of things that we'd seen before, which is really unfair on them because it's not their fault. But it's very Edge versus Randy Orton. It was very Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano. Really good ideas, but just ideas where the execution probably went a little bit too long because it's really hard. Excuse me, what the hell was that? It was disgusting. It was really hard to maintain your... To maintain your... Uh, concentration for that long when you are lacking things like crowd and atmosphere and aura and cheers and booze and, and, and people sh shouting out stupid stuff. That's what wrestling is. Even if you don't know you're doing it subconsciously, you're so used to hearing it that when it's not there, and the other problem's the wrong word, but the other issue that AEW ran into this week is they've done such a good job in creating all of that on their normal show it's a terrible term, but when they then cut to the Jake Hagar John Moxley match, which clearly was pre recorded from a few weeks ago, it felt even more quiet. But I think if you can just get rid of that and take that to one side, I thought the, the story was awesome. The fact that Jake, uh, John Moxley tried to out MMA essentially Jake Hagar, but he couldn't, especially because Jake Hagar was the bigger guy. They then started to broaden the crowd, <laughs> no crowd, broaden the seats, you know, throwing each other into barricades, back belly drops on the floor. Uh, we saw that figure four around the railing. Pretty brute gruesome stuff. And then to finish with some classic chair shots and a paradigm shift on the chair, which is a devastating move. We may have forgotten about it, but it is. I thought it was fine. I don't think it was the spectacle that maybe many of us had hoped. I, you know, if you said, do you think it lived up to the build? Maybe not, because AEW did a tremendous job with that build. But again, I would put that down to there being no crowd. I think if you had a bunch of crowd going crazy, I thought it was Jake Hagar slash Jack Swagger. I, I mean that literally. I'm bringing in his WWE stuff. I thought it was one of his best matches that I'd seen. And even though he lost, I thought it cemented that character as a badass. I don't think it affected him at all. But what it did do, it established John Moxley as an amazing champion. So... That, that that's how I uh, that's how I felt about it. I, I wouldn't say that it was the greatest thing that I'd ever seen, but I certainly enjoyed it, and I certainly had a good time watching it. Again, just a little bit too long for my taste, but I would have said that about everything else that we'd already referenced up to this point. Uh, but let me know what you think. Drop drop me a line in the super chat. Drop me a line in the chat. I'll try and I'll try and pull as many as I can. Uh, I thought it was a good episode of AEW Dynamite too. Of course, it was a little bit less impactful terrible pun than it than it would have been otherwise but they're taping and again you have to remember the situation we're in but Britt baker has become one of my favorite characters in all of wrestling the asshole dentist who knew that i would enjoy an asshole dentist so much i thought kip sabian versus chuck was just a really fun match and i thought orange cassidy and penelope ford played their roles awesomely i loved lance archer versus colt cabana because colt cabana didn't come across like a chump but lance archer still like a badass the jake roberts promo at the start was Flipping it gets better every week. I don't know how he does it. And he must have recorded them all back to back. So the man can just go. 
And then, you know, all the build up for the, you know, the John Moxley. I will say, I, I love all the inner circle stuff so far. And to me, Chris Jericho rarely does anything wrong. I would say that the, uh, the, the bubbly bunch, which was the Brady Bunch parody, it missed the mark just a little bit. But again, the effort they went to to record all of that in their house and to come up with the idea to begin with. And I know that some people loved it. So in that sense, I don't see the issue. And my man Sean in Super Chat says, uh, whatever the hell it was, it was worth the two bits. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. And Leonard says in the Super Chat, I thought I was already a patron, realized I'm not, but I am now. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you, Leonard. Been really enjoying all the extra vids. Uh... In, in addition to the wrestling cheers, BA 24-7. We're so doing that. Bald asshole 24-7. And yeah, we'll reduce it to BA 24-7. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> I love it. See, it was worth coming back on YouTube uh, uh, to do this. Uh, and then re, re bom Bomanox. I hope I got that run in the super chat. Has another t-shirt idea. I'm as bald as the day is long. I'm writing all of these down. I don't know how many will be made. Well, the bald 24-7 one will. Uh, but I love it. Thank you. I owe you all, I guess I owe you all royalties, really, for coming up with the idea. Instead, I'll just give you a shout out. That's fair, right? That's okay. Um, and we also, obviously, we have some things lined up for the uh, the TNT Championship, the, the tournament as well. Obviously, now Lance Archer has gone through. Uh, we had Sammy Guevara versus Shug D, my man Shug D. Shout out to Shug D. I met him in a wrestling show in Scotland, so it was really cool to see him on Dynamite. Uh, but, you know, we set up Darby Allen versus him for next week, I believe. Kenny Omega's going to be on the show. I just thought it was a decent couple of hours of wrestling. It wasn't hard to watch. It was fine. I thought Jim Ross did a pretty damn good job in the main event. Maybe you could argue that was uh, some of his best work for a while. So... Yeah, like I have no, I had no qualms with it whatsoever. It didn't end with as big a bang as maybe it does usually, but I understand and I get it. So I'm not going to go too nuts. And I think that was pretty much the entire show. I say as I look off into the distance to make sure I haven't, I haven't forgot about anything. Like a lot of video packages, really, really well produced. But again, that was okay with me. A lot of build up to the main event, as we've already said too. And the key is that John Moxley right now is a really dominant world champion. He can go away for a while if AEW hasn't filmed anything else uh, with him. And he'll feel a bit like a Brock Lesnar. And I don't mean that in a negative or a disparaging way. I mean, he feels like a guy that's going to come in, he's going to kick ass, and he's going to and he's going to feel like the man. It did make me laugh at the end when he looked down the camera and said, AEW is the best promotion in the world. I was like, John, you can't say that. People on the internet go crazy and go, you're biased. You're biased. <laughs> I'd love that if people started getting into that nonsense. But uh, yeah, that made me giggle. It made me giggle. Apparently NXT was better last night, says somebody. I haven't seen it yet. And now they have flipping. Well, no, I get it. It got moved to BT Sport and Paramount. So I don't get to see uh, NXT for a week. Unless I watch it on TV and I don't have those channels. But that's okay. Something to look forward to in a week on the network. But I will read the results later. I don't know anything that happened. And I don't think I mentioned any of the NXT uh, releases en masse, which I also should have done. So shout out to those guys um, uh, those guys as well. But I actually know anything that happened on NXT. I know Finn Balor was on it and that was about it. So I need to get into it. Somebody says, are you sad about Rusev Simon? I'm sad about anybody losing their job. But of course, as a massive Rusev fan, especially that he got released on Rusev Day. I mean, can you believe it? It was... Um I, I, it genuinely was a shock to me that one it was all bad at the time but when i saw because I, I saw rusev's tweet first and then it got confirmed by the internet i was like how why I, what, what do i see that nobody else sees uh, a few people mentioning the jimmy snooker uh yeah the the dark side of the ring i haven't seen it yet i'll watch that this evening as i have been doing for a while uh, I'll, I'll do that, but uh, I've heard different things. I've heard good and bad. Oh, I'm my battery on my laptop's about to die, which is which is interesting. Where's my plug? There it is. It's fun and games. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. I'll watch it later, but I will... Um, I will get back to you. I know that story is incredibly controversial, though, so we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. Ashton Reynolds Super Chat says, Now, dang it, Simon, I started this whole <laughs> bald asshole conversation, so I want my shout-out. Yes, I am being a brat. No, I do not care. Hey, you can have it, Ashley. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I do think this a lot when people say bald asshole. But yeah, here, you were the catalyst. So, Ashley, thank you very much. And maybe I wouldn't have asked for T-shirt ideas if you hadn't have done it. I love people calling me a bald asshole. And now when I call myself a bald asshole, some nice people go, oh, no, you don't need to say that. No, it's like a badge of honor now. I'm bald. I'm an asshole. Therefore, 
I'm a born asshole. Greatest thing ever. Right, before we do start to wrap up, we've got to check that nothing else has happened in the, in, in the period that we've been doing this. Because who the hell knows, right? If you had told me everything yesterday, I wouldn't have believed it. But it seems like, it seems like we're okay, <laughs> which is good. Uh, and Aiden English got, out, got, got released as well, which surprised me. I don't know why. I, they all did. They all surprised me because the, 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 nuts. No, I don't think anybody else has, has, has gone down. Let me check a new site as well as opposed to that. No, the, the, nothing else has happened. Maybe there'll be more later. I saw some tweets earlier saying that maybe that is going to happen, but I absolutely, I absolutely don't know. Uh, no one is meaner than Tamina, <laughs> says someone. You're damn right. Uh, do you think Ryder and Hawkins would go to AEW and win the championships and start their own YouTube channel? Anything is possible. Anything is possible, which is why now I hope the world starts and opens up faster than maybe we were hoping otherwise, so we can see all of these people land on their feet. Uh, afternoon, Simon. Much love for your Y video last night. That's very kind. However, anyone looks at the WWE reasons for the cuts, the optics are pretty bad. Yes, look, I'm not, I'm not saying there's a right or wrong here. Uh, on mass, I'm saying you're allowed your own opinion, and I'm certainly not going to shout at you. Uh, I just think that it's very sad for that many people to lose their jobs, as I've said repeatedly already. Robert Jackson, Super Chat says, Off topic, but have you tried the Final Fantasy VII remake? It's a lot of fun. Well, off the record, clearly on the record, I've never even played the original Final Fantasy VII because I was a Nintendo boy growing up and I just never got around to it. So maybe now is the time to play it, but no, I haven't. Um soon i do have some video game stuff coming soon though i got an early release code for something today wink wink nudge nudge so keep an eye out for that uh sean in the super chat says uh i just subscribed to you on patreon 20 dollars well spent well that's very kind sean and of course at 20 dollars you get a personal video message from me as well so make sure you dm me and let me know what kind of personal visit video message um uh you would like uh, and on that note uh, I just because loads of people are watching right now, please smash the subscribe button. That would rock. Hit the like button as well because YouTube is all about that. Otherwise, yeah, look, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Simon316. If you want to come follow me in there, that would rock. As we have mentioned, I do have a patron, patreon.com forward slash Simon316. There's a link down below. Uh, that's It funds all my personal projects. So it funds my podcast, all my YouTube channel, my fitness stuff, blah, 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 blah. You've seen it. You've seen it. Anybody that has um, that has jumped on, thank you so much. Uh, Matt Moore in the Super Chat says, long-term booking, Buddy Murphy, don't know who that is, Murphy <laughs> wins money in the bank. Seth beats Drew at SummerSlam. Buddy cashes in and wins the title. Yay or nay? I like it a lot. I think it cements Buddy Murphy as a massive player, which he can be with the right booking. Uh, I don't want Drew McIntyre to lose the belt at SummerSlam, though. That's the difference. I would like Drew McIntyre to be the champion until WrestleMania 37, if I'm completely honest, and maybe even through WrestleMania 37. I think with the right booking and the right planning, WWE has something in Drew McIntyre. But there's only one way to let that play out, and that's by keeping the belt on him. But I love the story, yes. And I truly believe that with the right idea, Murphy has all the potential in the world. I totally agree with that. I don't mind it being Seth versus Drew. I really don't. The story's a little bit meh, but I like the idea of it. Uh, Football Extremist in the Super Chat says, Simon, please, I am a student. Any business advice? Wow. I mean, do you want business advice from me? Well, I will tell you the two things that I've always, always done. One, I always followed my gut uh, and my intuition, I guess, for lack of a better word. So I turned down what I would consider pretty good opportunities, but because my gut, for one reason or another, was telling me that they were incorrect and that always turned out to be right. So follow your gut. And two, do things you're passionate about and work really hard. Actually, there's three. There's the three things I've always done. I've always focused on my passions. I've always trusted my gut and I've always tried to outwork everybody else. Because there are far more talented people than me in the world. So I was like, all right, well, I'll just keep working all the time. And hopefully that means it will balance out. So they are my, uh, they are my, uh, my, my, my words of advice. And hopefully uh, they can help you out. Uh, thank you so much to people that joined me today. This was awesome. This was a massive, massive show. So you'll put a smile on my face for the rest of the day. Uh, otherwise, yeah, head on to What Culture Wrestling right now. Make sure you give them a subscribe where we will do ups and downs for AEW Dynamite. I'll be in the chat over there as well. Give me a subscribe too. Like the video if you haven't done already. And we've done all the other things. Um, hopefully nobody else gets released. 
We just don't know. If they do, we'll do another one of these and we can continue to talk about it and try and figure out where the wrestling business is at. But more importantly, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe. And I hope all this madness isn't too much for you at the moment. And if it is, don't worry. We all have those fleeting moments. It will pass and we'll get back to it. And soon we'll be able to run outside and run amok again. And BA4 in the super chat, just to finish things off, has says, have you been watching the build to BTE 200? No, I'm behind. Undead FB Goo, who I haven't seen today, will be upset. But no, <laughs> I'm behind, but I always catch up on... Uh, I always catch up eventually. And it sounds really good. It sounds like they're doing matches on BTE now, which I'm excited about, which is smart. I think we're getting Matt and Nick Jackson soon, right? On BTE. What a crazy world we live in. Imagine I had told you any of this at the start of 2020. You would have looked at me like I was crazy and that would have been fine. Uh, take care of yourselves. Again, if you can make sure notifications are on for the channel as well. That way you'll know when a brand new video of mine goes live. And look, the more people that watch it, the better I feel. That's really what it's all about. It's all one big confident self-worth madness. I love you all. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. And I'll talk to you all again very soon.